what your weeks may have looked like, but give thanks and praise unto the Lord. He has brought you here. He's worthy of praise this morning. Amen, amen. If you are a little bit hesitant of opening your mouth, clap your hands. Give a wave off to God. Hallelujah. I could have been dead to thank God, but goodness and mercy were following me all the days of my life and were dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. The Lord is our helper. The Lord is our shield. He is our strength. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord, amen. saints. And in the power of his might. I don't know what you have brought today. Maybe the devil is riding you uh, like everything. I want you to prepare yourselves for blessings today. Prepare yourselves to what the Lord has in store for you. Ready yourselves for heaven's best. Even during the moments that we have today. The Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory to God. He's worthy of our praise. Worthy of our adoration. Hallelujah. What does God have in store for you today? You don't know? Then open yourselves up. Turn your cups upward to receive what the Lord has for you today. Oh, glory to God. Father, you're welcomed in this place today. We gather to worship you and to adore you. You are great and mighty and strong and powerful, Lord God. And we bless your name for that. Thank you, Lord, for, for bringing us from last Sunday to this Sunday, oh Lord. And we bless you, Lord God. We've come through storms. We've come through trials. We've come through tribulations. We've come through victories, oh God. Through it all, morning by morning, new mercies we see. Great is thy faithfulness unto us. Be pleased and welcomed in this place today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the 105th division of Psalms. And we're going to read the first five verses for our hearing this morning as we enter into the sanctuary with the reading of the word of the Lord as we fill the sanctuary with his word, knowing that his word gives life, his word is our strength. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of his wonderful acts, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, the miracles and judgments he pronounced. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and now we go and do the word of the Lord. You may be seated this morning, and as you're seated, you are seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. So good to see each and every one of you gathered on this summer Sunday morning. Thanks be to God, we are not assembled outside where we can have the air conditioners running in our cars and in our trucks. Oh, glory to God. And we don't take anything for granted looking back at where we have come from. Looking back at what the Lord has done for us, what a blessing it is. What an encouragement it is indeed. Today, I want you to be encouraged. I know that the week may not have gone exactly like you had wanted it to go. I know that there may be struggles that you may be struggling with, wrestling through. Give God a chance as we just open everything that we have up unto him knowing that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or even to ask. My, 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 as we ponder about that and to know that God's grace is available unto us. Remember grace, God's willingness to be involved in our lives. Irregardless of where we have come from, irregardless of what has been said, God is willing to be involved in our lives. And as we gather in this 2021 comeback season, this comeback season, as 
as we have maneuvered our way through this pandemic and thinking back through the last 15 plus months of what God has brought us through. God has brought us this far. Some had to wrestle even through the COVID-19, but thanks be to God, health and healing are theirs today. And how good and gracious and blessed we are in the presence of the Lord. And so as we think about what God has done, as we realize that he is still involved in our lives and in our circumstances, we come to see that our territory could be enlarged. We come to see what God is willing to do and what God is desiring to do. And even as we come to recognize that, we ready ourselves for the morning prayer. And even as we ready ourselves for our prayer time today, knowing that the needs are great indeed, knowing that as we look around and see some of the needs of the hour, we know how awesome God is. We know that he's still desiring to do more. And as we proclaim a new season of hope, we shake off discouragement. We shake off despair. Things may not have fallen the way we wanted them to fall. I heard this quote a couple of weeks ago, and it's a quote from someone else because it says, it, it's like it's been said. If God answered all your prayers this week, would it just change you, or would it change the world around us? Would it just change you? As you think about your prayer lives, as you think about what you pray for, would it, if God answered everything, would it just change you, or would it change the world about you? As you're praying for your big toe, mm -hmm. as you're praying for your bills to be paid, uh-huh. If God answered all of your prayers this week, would it just change you or would it change the world around us? As we speak to the north, south, east, and west, as we call forth spiritual awakening in eyes, as we call forth deliverance of those who are captive, as we call forth healing for those that are sick, that's changing the world. As we pray for leaders near and far, that's changing the world around us. And as we go unto God in prayer, even as we think about and we look at the news and we see the discourse of today, and we believe that there is a more excellent way that leaders could lead, that people could live their lives, we pray that there'll be spiritual awakening, that there'll be insight, that there'll be uh, eyes that'll be opened to be attentive to what God is doing and what God is saying even as we've gone through this season of exposure, exposing everything. I know we think we got everything covered in our eyes. Everything is covered. But as God is exposing, let's be quick to repent, to turn away, to turn away and turn towards God. He is able, truly, 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 he is able. And so the needs that you bring today, the concerns that you bring today, the burdens that you bring today, we roll them over to God. We roll them over and place them on the throne of grace this morning. Let's ready ourselves for prayer in whatever posture and position that you would gather in as we pray together. Uh, we would even welcome that. If you want to just kneel at your seat, you're welcome to do that. If you just want to stand, if you just, whatever you position yourselves to be attentive to the Lord and we establish agreement together, it's just not one person praying. But we pray together. We unite together. We agree together. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten thousand to flight. As we live in a darkened land. As we live in a land of people who are living as they just desire to live. And we see things going from bad to worse. That's what our prayers are achieving. That's what our prayer. We're giving heaven permission. Heaven have your way. Do what you want to do. Save who you want to save. Deliver who you want to deliver. Change who you want to change. Heal families that you want to heal. Lord, have your way. Let's pray together this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we can approach the throne today, Lord God. And we do so with hearts that are filled with praise and thanksgiving today. You are the great I am. You are the creator. You said, let there be and there was. And so, Father, we place our minds and our spirits into attention into who you are. Yeah. You
You are the great I am. And we bless your name and we worship you. Our hearts are bending down before you, Lord God, recognizing who you are. Father, you know that there are some who have come into this place troubled. Troubled in their hearts, troubled in their minds, troubled in their spirits, oh God. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are reviving. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are healing, Lord, that you are displacing the heaviness, Lord God, with thanks and praise and adorations unto you, Lord, for you inhabit the praises of your people. Live in our praises, oh God, as we give you permission to have your way, Lord God. As we look around the world, around us, oh God, as we see hopelessness and, and helplessness and carelessness, oh Lord, we pray for divine intervention, oh, yeah. Lord God. We pray for deliverance yeah. now. We pray that the captive will cry out oh, yeah. to you, Lord God. Come and save me. Come and deliver me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. Or even as we're gathered in this building, as we're gathered online, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that you are having your way. We give you permission, Lord God, as we recognize we don't battle against flesh and blood. And so, Father, we call the devil on the carpet right now in the name of Jesus. No more. Will he be able to torment us? Oh, no yeah. more will he be able to torment our yes, bodies. Yes. No more will he be able to torment our oh, minds yeah. and our emotions. No more will he torment our spirits. Yes. No more will he torment our children and our family members. No more will he torment our communities, oh God. I thank you that we are calling forth a fresh reviving, Lord God. Revive us again, Lord God. Revive us again. In the name of Jesus, yes. oh Lord, do what you want to do in our lives. And do what you want to do in this place, oh God, as we live to give you glory and thanks and praise, oh God. Father, meet the needs that are gathered in this place, Lord God, even as we whisper a prayer. Lord, you know that that burdens us and troubles us. We give it to you, Lord God. You care for us in such a special way. We are valuable unto you as we reminded ourselves on last week, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for trusting us with this gift of life. And Lord God, now we're going to uh, be at attention unto your directions, unto what you are doing, Lord God. Thank you for healing. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for answering prayers. Thank you, Lord God, for spiritual awakenings, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for reviving us, for reviving the lives in which we live, Lord God, as we live to your glory, Lord God. You're welcome in this place, oh Lord. Be with us as we continue to worship you, to praise you, and to adore you. We love you, Lord, and we wanted to share that as we continue to proclaim you. Give us liberty and give us freedom, Lord God. I thank you for hearts that are filled with praise today. Hear our prayer as we continue to pray without ceasing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the year 2021, as the Lord has graced us and blessed us to live throughout this last 15 months, to live through this cycle and system of the pandemic going on, along with all of the um, leaders trying to establish the focus and the guidance to lead the world's population into uh, an appreciated view of being restored and to health. So as we recognize that, the year 2021, we know that the world is in the midst of um, monumental challenges. We recognize that on every level, be it just the local level, the parish, the state, the nation, the world. We are in the midst of monumental challenges, challenges that calls for the best in leadership, challenges that calls for the best in how we lead our families, and how we lead our lives, and how we lead our churches. Monumental challenges that you and I are dealing with. And so as we are part of the body of Christ, we choose to position ourselves as a source for answers. A source for answers. As we look um, for answers, we're not living this life being all kind of nilly-willy and all shaken and all distressed. But we have chosen to position ourselves as sources of answers. And so when we say that God is our source, he is our creator, he is our everything. When we say that, then we're saying we're taking all of this stuff that we're dealing with, all of the challenges that we're dealing with, even stuff that are above and beyond our experiences, but we're taking it to God. Because we look to him as the source. We proclaim that even as God so loved the world that he sent Jesus as our Savior. Jesus is our answer. And so therefore we are able to live in peace. We're not able, we're not living in just kind of ignoring some stuff. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying, that we live to ignore some stuff. Well, I can't do nothing about that. Let me ignore this. This is not how we're choosing to live. But we're choosing to position ourselves as sources of answers. And so therefore, as we see all of the questions that our world has, as we look at the directions that should be taken, what we're saying is we see a wonderful opportunity to proclaim a new season of hope. A wonderful opportunity. As we said, as we closed out our message time on Sunday, if now is not a time to proclaim hope, when is it? We don't proclaim hope after we won the championship. We don't proclaim hope when we got the other team down by 50 points, and then we're going to proclaim hope. No, hope is called when we're down by 50 yeah. points. And it does not seem that we're going to be able to do it. It seems that every shot that we've taken, every swinging of the bat that we have done, it seems that it comes up short, it comes up missing. But yet we're able to proclaim hope, not in ourselves, not in a man, not in a preacher. Our hope is in the ancient of days. Our hope is the one who created heavens and the earth. Our hope is in our God as we proclaim that living hope indeed. And so as we bless the name of the Lord, we see this opportunity to proclaim a new season of hope. Let's not give in to discouragement. Let's not give in to despair. Let's not even ignore what's going on around us. Let's ask the Lord for greater wisdom, for greater insights indeed. To come back with me into the Old Testament. As we see in the Old Testament, the children of Israel were going into the promised land. God had sent Moses as a deliverer, delivering them out of captivity in Egypt land. And as they were going into the promised land, God told them repeatedly to dispossess the land. The King James word that's used, but it's a word that's in our Webster Dictionary. God told the children of Israel to dispossess the land as they prepare to possess the land. Okay? And so therefore, in one example is in Numbers. Numbers chapter 33, verse 53 says, God says, And you will dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. 
So God says you will dispossess. The dispossess means to put out of possession. Put out of the, dispossess the land so that you can possess the land. I want you to see that more. As God told the children of Israel, this is, there's some other folks that got this land that I promised you. But I want you to go and to dispossess it first, take it from them, and then go and to possess the land. Okay? And so when our, our message theme today is about dispossessing the land, I stop by to remind us of this battle that we in as we have gall enough to proclaim a new season of hope. Who do you think you are? Proclaiming the new. What's going to be is going to be. If you're back from the 60s generation, K Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. But we said, oh no, we have a concept in our vocabularies. We have a new weaponry in our utility belt. And it's about dispossessing the land to put out of possession. And so, as we are proclaiming the opportunity before us, we understand that we must dispossess the land before we possess the land. Now, one of our issues may be we are in co-possession of territory. We are in co-possession. Every day you wake up and it's a battle between you and the devil. Co-possession of the land. And then you are talking about, I possess this. I possess my health. I possess my family. I possess my mind. And every day, it's like, it's like a jump ball at midcourt for the basketball game. It's you and the devil. You and the devil. You trying to win the tip every day. Oh! And every day, the devil just seems a little bit taller and a little bit higher. And you go get the ball and you just can't reach it. And every day is a jump ball for you. Every day is a struggle. Every day the devil rides you like an old mule is ridden by an old cowboy. The devil just rides you every day, every day. Today I'm reminding you that you and I in this season of hope have the authority to dispossess the land as we move to possess it for what the Lord has said. And so therefore, we don't have to play jump ball every day with the devil. I don't think that that will even work. And so, when Jesus says in our text of scripture, in Matthew chapter 8, chapter 16, verse 18, he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He says, I tell you, Peter, upon this rock, upon your confession, I will build my church. And the gates, in the NIV, it says the gates of Hades. Literally, it's about, it's the place where death reigns. A place where death reigns. The place that even spiritual death reigns. And where there is spiritual death, it will not reign. And the gates of hell will not prevail. And so here is the implication that Jesus, as he tells Peter for this revelation, is that you ought to go and to dispossess the land. Dispossess the stuff the devil has stolen. Mm -hmm. And so we take the land spiritually and we redeem the culture. You know, culture. The acceptable behavioral patterns. What everybody is doing, how everybody is living, what we become convinced of because living living for Jesus in this way, nobody is doing that. Nobody has time for that. And so when we're able to to, to, to dispossess the land, to redeem the culture. Now, many of you struggle with me saying this because you know that those behaviors of, your, of yours do not please God. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Nobody else may know, but you know what I'm talking about. Those behaviors of yours, uh, when you're talking about, oh, I'm going to believe God for some things, and you're holding on to certain behaviors, that jump ball, baby, you ain't winning it any time. That's like you trying to win a jump ball for Shaq. Jack's going to get it every time. Every time. That man's seven foot tall. And even in his old age, he's still able to get the ball before you can get it. Simply because how he's positioned himself to be a foot and a half taller than you are. And so as we recognize that and what the Lord is doing and saying, we realize that we're not fooling God at all. 
Okay? And so the hope that we proclaim starts with dispossessing the land. Get it back, people. I'm taking my children back. I'm taking my family back. I'm taking my finances back. Some of you don't have a clue about your finances because all you do is live the way it is. You've never even thought about it. You've never even written down what it is that you owe. What if you've never even developed a plan. Because, you know, you lose that jump ball every day with the devil. You lose that jump ball every first of the month, every third of the month, every two weeks. You lose it all the time because you don't even realize what the devil is doing. Because you don't have time. I'm just broke. I'm just broke. you got to dispossess the land before you can possess it. The Holy Spirit is doing His work. Even as we gather in this place today, the Holy Spirit is doing His work. And so that hope begins with dispossessing. Give me my right mind back, God. Give me my peace back. I'm taking my blessings back. We're dispossessing the devil's land as we go against the gates of hell. The devil has stolen our land. What did Jesus say the devil comes to do? To kill. To steal. You think the devil playing again? I don't even know what the tip of the is. You think the devil playing for funsies with you? Back in the day, I played marbles. And again, I said this before, but my parents never wouldn't let us play for keeps. Oh, no. We, we had to pull our marbles out at the end of the day and we came back to school because we had to come back with the same marbles. Because to play for keeps was gambling and they were too. You, you couldn't play for keeps. You had to play funsies. And after the bar, the marbles gave us over. Give me back my marbles. Give me back my marbles. And so you think the devil is playing nice and polite and quiet with them. Not so. Not so. And so as we enter into a new season of hope, let me share three things with you. Three keys that I feel uh, to the dispossessing of the land. And as you look at our text of scripture in Matthew 16, as it speaks to us about this deep uh, disposition. Number one. The first key in dispossessing the land is the awakening. The awakening. Verse 16 of our text of scripture. Simon Peter answered. After Jesus says, who do you say I am? And he had all 12 of them lined up. And it was only Simon Peter in a aha moment says, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. And so Peter has this aha awakening that his 11 other comrades did not have. There was an aha. There was a, a spiritual light bulb to go on. There was an awakening for Peter. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Friends, as we transition in this season to awake to the mystery that Jesus is born. To awaken, to, to have a, a, a revelation, to have a rhema season, to, to, uh, to be awakened, to know who this Savior is, who Jesus is. He is the Son, not of the dead God, not of the disconcerned God, not of the sleeping God, but He is the, he is the Son of the living God. Jesus is Lord. He is the Christ. That you can have the revelation that Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my helper. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my answer. Jesus is my everything. That there can be an awakening within you as you position yourself to move through this season of your lives. There can be an awakening within you. You know, too often we look for great move of God in the land so that all can see how great God is. And we spend time in fasting and praying. God, show yourself to be strong and mighty in the land so that everybody can see how great and how wonderful you are. But we miss the great mystery and the power of the cross that it, that it has had upon our lives, upon our lives. You know, it's easy for you to say, it's dead around here. It's easy for you to, oh, ain't nobody cares. Nobody is trying to live right. Nobody is trying to do right. It's just dead around here. Ain't nothing happening around here. And see, just like that is how the devil tries to steal the awakening that can happen in your life. Jesus is my Lord. He saved me. He has delivered me. He's given me new life. He's given me yeah. wonderful opportunities. He's healed my body. Yeah. He's healed That's my right. children. He's lived. Don't tell me God ain't doing nothing. Let me tell you what my testimony oh, is. God. Glory to God. When we can understand that, you get your mind off. He's dead around here. People don't want to do right. People not living right. Step back and say, 
I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Jesus says, upon that confession, upon, upon that alignment, Upon that alignment, you've already been awakened. And upon that alignment that I, you are, you are Jesus. You are the son of the living God. I, I, I align my life. I align my day. Now the assignment. Whatever you bind, on earth, you bound in heaven, whatever you lose. And so therefore, we're giving the keys. These are the keys to the kingdom. Binding and loose. Dispossess the land that the enemy has in your life. In your life. When you're alone. Going through your thoughts. Going through your dreams and your desires and wishes and the nightmares that have come along with it. And the plans that have fallen to the wayside. Walking through all of that. As you dispossess the land that the enemy has in your lives and in your families and in your influences, your friends, your job, your, your church, your region. As you go through all of that, dispossess the land by taking your assignment, binding and loosing. Bind. Now, typically we talk about binding as, yeah, but I bind you that mouth. I bind you over here, I bind you over there, bind you here, bind you there. But listen, friends, bind that mouth of yours that's running too much. Bind it, bind that attitude that you have. Bind it, and the mother, bind it, bind it. You walk around talking about, I bind you, said, Lord, I bind you. Bind that lazy spirit on you. Bind that, bind the addiction, bind those ugly ways in your life. I bind it now. Bind means to tie up. To tie up. I can't get loose. I can't get loose. Bind it. You can try all you want attitudes. You can try all you want mouth. The gossip's mouth that never blesses and always curses. Bind it in the name of Jesus. That's your assignment. That's your assignment. And you know what God says? Listen, when you do it, I'm going to send heaven down. All right. Amen. Take your mind on the earth. Mm -hmm. We'll be bound in heaven. Oh, Amen. Jesus, I can't do what Jesus said. You do it, and heaven's going to heal. Heaven's going to give you the power and the authority. But when you don't feel like a lion, and you're going to be wobbling all your lives, you and the devil are going to be playing jump ball. Every morning, every morning, we're we'll giving you keys. Keys to the kingdom. You got to take up your assignment. You got to take up your assignment and loosen your call upon your lives. Loosing the joy and the purpose of life. Loosing your happiness throughout the day. That's your assignment. You got to do it. You got to do your assignment. Here we are. I don't feel like it. You don't understand what I'm dealing with. But we tell our children all the time, you better go to school, school and do your assignment. And they tell you, I don't feel like it. What you tell them? I don't care if you don't feel like it. You're going to do it anyway. Because why? It's your assignment. Yeah. So all of a sudden, when it comes back to us, I don't feel like it. I don't think that I have to do it. Listen, my friends, as we close today, we all have a choice today. We're getting the keys and announcing this new season. This new season of hope. We're showing you the illustration and the example that we don't have to play jump ball with the devil in your life. And say, Pastor, I won three times this week, but the other four days, man. Listen, I want to help us win every day. I want to help us win every day. And as we bow our heads in prayer, as we acknowledge the Lord in our lives today, we're going to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are and what you are doing. Father, we give you thanks and praise today. We bless your name, Lord God, and reminding us, Lord God, about the keys, the keys to the kingdom, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that we can hear your call to go and to dispossess the land. Dispossess the land. The devil has had too much play in our lives. We want to dispossess it because, Lord, you told us we could. You told us you could. And then Jesus tells us, that we can go against the gates of hell. Take back all that the Lord has stolen away from us. We can dissolve and destroy 
those gates of hell that keep us bound so many times. Hear our prayer today, O oh Lord, as we acknowledge you, as we give you thanks and praise for who you are. For oh, bless your name, Lord God. And I thank you that you have lifted your people higher. Thank you for great victories that are being won in their lives, O oh God, as they live to give you glory, as they live to give you praise, O oh God. May we take these keys, give it out, the awakening. May we not give into the discouragement and despair because nobody else is living for Jesus. Nobody else tries to live for him. May that awakening in us be what we need in saving us. He's giving us wonderful promises of deliverance, of being the answer to our lives, oh God. And we're thanking you, oh God, even for that. Hear our prayer today, Lord God, as we bless your name and as we praise you forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pretty much you just stand with me just a little bit. And in the safest way possible, we said, one who wants to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Would you come and just stand at the altar? Just want to speak a word over your lives, the decisions and choices that you're making to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. But you can see that today you're tired of playing jump ball with the devil, but you want to dispossess the land. You've had that awakening that you want to be all that God has desired for you to be in the name of Jesus. We oh, thank you, Lord, for who you are. We bless you, Lord God. You may have noticed or may not. 
our offering the dispensary is to my left as you exit and you are free to place your offerings in that. Again, this month we are lifting our scholarship fund offering. Uh, we're believing for $3,500 and uh, we're going to see the Lord uh, meet the needs uh, of uh, for our uh, scholars. Uh, as um, Again, next month early we'll be uh, dismissing. We've had two of our scholars to already go back into college uh, as uh, we want to pray for them and to uh, lift them up continually. This is the week of camp meeting, and as we move forward in camp meeting, uh, there'll be no Wednesday night Zoom session. Camp meeting starts Friday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Registration is $15, $30 for your family. We encourage you to be supportive of our camp meeting. We're shrinking camp meeting this year, and uh, we're just encouraging you to be faithful. Again, 7 o'clock, then at the end of services, there will be a carry-out meal. Again, we're trying to limit any lot of sitting down and gathering, uh, if you will, because people are coming from all parts of the state, so you can take your meals back home with you. Uh, and then uh, Saturday morning, 8.30, we're having a session of prayer and encouragement and support. We're, we want to hear some of how churches have made it through the pandemic, some of the challenges that were there, some of the victories, and then we want to close in prayer being supported with those churches that are represented. That's at the 8.30 time frame. And then at 10.30, we close uh, with, uh, with a message, our closing service. Uh, Pastor Steve Nelson will be preaching for Friday night, and I'll be closing our services for uh, for Saturday at 10.30. So we're looking for you uh, to gather to be supportive of our camp meeting. Uh, again, we'll be, we will be uh, also going virtual also. So that will be going forward. So stay tuned for, for that. We give thanks to our health ministries that's carrying up, our ushers, our greeters, our health care workers. We're so appreciative. Uh, of them and the services uh, that they have rendered in allowing us to gather as safely as we can, safely uh, as uh, as possible. Okay, Brother Joe, you have something? Yeah.
giving people victories as they carry through with the keys to the kingdom, oh God. And now watch over us this week as we engage, Lord God, in this week victoriously over the enemy, oh God. I thank you that you're bringing us back together on Friday evening as we come for another year of camp meeting. We proclaim victory each and every day. Be with us and thank you for a fresh anointing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you.